Adam wished you a Merry Christmas. Adam wished you a Merry Christmas. Adam wishes you a Merry Christmas. Cause you're back with chapter six. Six. Hello guys, welcome back. Welcome to the Adam's first annual Christmas special. Today we're gonna bring three to four. To we're bringing three chapters in one video, and we're actually doing five videos with three chapters today. I am so excited because. The faster we get this book done, the faster we can continue the other series that we did not get to finish this year. I'm a weirdo because I'm wearing two shirts. It's that cold. It's like negative some degrees outside. And I'm here trying to make a video for all y'all. Because it's the annual first edition Adam's special. Christmas special. So yeah, every Christmas, I will be doing these type of videos where I do every book we're reading, I'll do three chapters, five videos in one day. So it's five videos with three chapters in each, every day. And, I mean, yeah. So, it's not that big of a deal, but still. You guys should check out these, because these could be helping you out if you ever have to read these. But yeah. Um... I figured out I'm making over $800 on YouTube a year. So I think that's when I hit a thousand subscribers. So the more you guys watch, I, I actually don't care if I make money on YouTube right now. I care about my viewers. I don't care about the money. Other YouTubers do. Some YouTubers do. I just care about you guys. I don't care about me making money. I could care less if I do. I'm just doing it for you guys. And I'm just trying to make this world a better place. And you guys are so loved and so appreciated by me, by my family, by my friends, by everybody in the whole wide world. And even God loves you. We are all put on this world to have a purpose. And my purpose is to make you happy. So, yeah. Um, and to just do videos and to be myself. So, yeah. We're, we're reading Louisiana's Way Home like I did yesterday and the day before. So, I basically upload. Um, now, I'm actually uploading like 10 to like 11 videos in one day today. Uh, because if you think about it, five videos. Oh no, wait, no. I'm thinking. Okay, I'm. I'm doing basically five videos today, and I'm also gonna be doing other videos, but I'm gonna premiere them for other dates. Like some will be premiered on December 25th tomorrow, Christmas. Then the 26th, then the 27th, then the 28th, then the 29th, then the 30th, then the 31st. So yeah, we are almost at the end. We are nearly at the end of 2022. We are almost at Christmas, not even one day till Christmas, and I might be getting a MacBook, which means I won't have to video record on this device anymore, which isn't bad. I, I mean, it's a good device, but it gets so hot and it dies so quickly that it makes me hate it a little bit, but still. Anyway, it's three minutes in and I'm still talking, but here we go. Chapter 6. The clock at Dr. Fox's office said it was nine. This clock in Dr. Fox's office said that it was 9.47. I was struck by how much had happened since 3 a.m. I had been kidnapped by Granny. We had crossed over a state line. We had run out of gas. I had eaten 14 very small bags of peanuts. I would seen my life, my life flash in front of my eyes. I had met Ernest. I have found a dentist and I have driven a car. My goodness, I said to the lady behind the desk at the at Dr. Fox's office, would you like, would you look at the time? So much had happened. I was going to tell her about my amazing exploits, or at least some of them, but it was very clear that the woman was not in a good mood. She was staring at me and tapping her pencil against the desk. Her lips were very thin. Yes, she said. I smiled at her. I said, good morning. My granny is in desperate need of a dentist. I accepted the exceptionist to say something along the lines of, well, you are exactly the right place. But she didn't say nothing, anything at all. Instead, she bent her head and started flipping through the pages of an appointment book. I stood there and waited. The office smelled like peppermint and rubbing alcohol. There was some music playing above our heads. It was a sad and wordless kind, kind of song. On the desk, there was a sign with white letters that said, Mrs. Ivy. I thought that was a pretty name for someone with such thin lips. Mrs. Ivy, I said, looking up at me. It's an emergency, I said. Do you have an appointment with Dr. Fox? I do not have an appointment because it is an emergency. I said in a very patient voice, you cannot make an appointment for an emergency because emergencies are in entirely unaccepted. My granny is in a great deal of pain. I'm afraid that we, will have to, we are all booked up today, said Mrs. Ivy. Her lips got even thinner. 
May I speak with Dr. Fox? I said, you most certainly, you most certainly may not, said Mrs. Ivy. There were one other person in the waiting room, an elder, an older woman who was working on a crossword puzzle and pretending not to notice that the receptionist and I were engaged in a battle of the wheels. That is what kind, this, this is what Granny called situations like this. A battle of the wheels. She always told me that I can win any battle of the wheels. Your opponent will be willing to give up at some point, but you may never. But you must never give up. The trick is to never give in. But really, and remember, no retreat. You must never retreat. So instead of retreating, I will really. I will walk, walked over to the waiting room and I went and stood next to the crossword puzzle lady. There was a painting above her head that showed some green trees standing together in the sunshine. In the far left-hand corner of the painting, in a dark puddle of shadow, there crouched a fox. Still with my, I stood with my hands and behind my back, and considered the painting, which the fox supposed to represent Dr. Fox to Dennis. What are we doing, said Mrs. Ivy. I am admiring the painting, I said without turning around. I do not need an appointment to admire the painting, do I? The woman with the crossword puzzle book looked at me and smiled. Hello, I said. Hello, said the woman. Are you doing different cult puzzles or easy ones? Dear medium, said the woman. She had a kind of face also doing, uh, she had a kind face also doing medium crossword puzzles. Not too hard or not too easy made her seem very trustworthy to me. Are you willing to give your dental appointment to someone who is in desperate pain, I asked. Pardon, said the crossword woman. My grandmother needs help. My granny needs help, I said. And I am wondering if you would donate your appointment with Dr. Fox to her. I'm afraid that I don't have an appointment to donate to the woman. It's my husband's appointment. You see, he's back there now, getting his teeth cleaned. You need to leave, said Mrs. Ivy. I assumed that Mrs. Ivy was talking to me and not the medium crossword puzzle lady. But I had no intention of leaving, and in, a in any case, it all ceased to matter. Because at that moment, Granny opened the door to Dr. Fox's office and came staggering in with her hand in her mouth. She was howling in truly impressive in a truly and tr truly impressive way. That's it. Chapter seven. That chapter six. Now chapter seven. Miss Ivy shrieked, a surprised little thin lip shriek. The crossword puzzle lady stood up out of her chair. She said, Evans, the crossword puzzle book fell from her hands and landed on the floor. Help me, said Granny to Miss Ivy. We are all booked today, said Miss Ivy, but she didn't sound very certain. But she said it. Clearly, the time for certainly had passed. Granny shouted, Ah! Help me! She had on her fur coat. Her hair was standing up straight on her head. Suddenly, I saw her like other people might see her. And I will not lie to you. It scared me. How can I say this? She did not look trustworthy. She looked like somebody with a curse upon her head, which of course was exactly the case. Granny, I said, and then I looked, and then a little man in a white, and then a little man in a white coat came out from behind a closed door. He said, "Is there a problem out here, Miss Ivy?" Miss Ivy said, "There is a slow scheduling inconsistency." Doctor Fox, you need to concern yourself. Granny put on her arms. Miss Ivy, stand back. Miss Ivy said, stand back, but it was too late. Granny went running toward Dr. Fox, and when she got to him, she fell down and clutched his feet. Well, what could Dr. Fox do? He took her into her office. Mrs. Ivy was not pleased. She had been outwitted in the battle of the wheels. She sat down at her desk. Her lips got so thin that they disappeared entirely. It turned out that Granny did not have one bad tooth. They were all bad. This is what Dr. Fox came out and told me. He stood in front of me in his white coat and adjusted his tiny glasses and said, I'm afraid that an infection was profound and, syst and systemic. I, I looked at him and thought that he did not resemble a fox at all. He looked more like a mouse. His nose in particular was very tiny and mouse-like. It twitched in a nervous way when he spoke. Profound, said Dr. Fox again. Systemic. Systemic. Yeah, they are systemic. I don't know how I say that. Oh, crap. Oh, well. Oh, my goodness, I said. I bent over. It was suddenly hard for me to breathe. I had every... I, I had... I have very swampy lungs, and in time of distress, they often fail me. Carol Annie Ann took me... Wait, Carol Ann took 
hold of my hand. I squeezed it. I squeezed back. Carol Ann was the medium difficulty crossword puzzle lady, and we had become good friends while Dr. Fox was busy pulling out each and every one of Granny's teeth. Carol Ann was a retired librarian, and we had talked for some time about our favorite books. She's very familiar with the story of Pinocchio, and even though the cricket was killed with a mullet in the beginning of the story, Carol Ann was going to visit her grandchildren after her, grand after her husband's teeth got cleaned. She was ta taking her ch grandchildren some chocolate chip cookies, which she was found out how very hungry I was. She was happy to go out to her car and retrieve and share with me. The cookies were in a red Christmas tin with a green wreath on it. There were little spots of raised up white on the tin. They were supposed to represent a joy joyous snowfall. In addition to the chocolate chips, there were walnuts in the cookies, and there was a surprise walnuts are not my favorite nut. But they are a good nut, nevertheless. I had eaten five walnuts and chocolate chip cookies. The Christmas tin was still in my lap. They, the, I looked down at it after Dr. Fox delivered his dental news to me. I ran my fingers over the raised spots of snow. I stared at the reef. It was very cherry-looking tin. But to tell the truth, it did not cheer me up very much to consider it. My situation was growing even more dire. She will, of course, need to re recuperate, said Dr. Fox, and antibi antibiotics, painkillers, and bed, ru bed rest. It is, it is quite a shock with, when all the teeth are removed at once. I took a deep breath and looked at Dr. Fox. All of them, I said, there's surely not a tooth left in her head. Who would Granny be without her teeth? You could say what you wanted about Granny. She lied. She stole. She had a curse on her head. True, true, true. But she was at very, she was at the very least the kind of person who smiled a lot. She used her teeth a great deal. Yes, said Dr. Fox. I thought it best to prepare you. It will be all right, said Carol Ann. She squeezed my hand again. I want to believe her. I stared at Dr. Fox, the dental mouse. I looked at him in the eye. I said, thank you very much for attending to my Granny. I noticed that there was a spot of blood on Dr. Fox's white coat. It was just a li one little drop, and it looked like something out of a fairy tale, like a pinprick on Sleeping Beauty's finger. It made me want to cry, but then I saw Mrs. Ivy sitting at her desk, looking disapproving. I thought, well, I will not give her this satisfaction. I did not. And then there were the matter of the bill. That was what Mrs. Ivy said. There, There is the matter of a bill, Dr. Fox's secret... Sir, Dr. Fox's services are not free. I said I did not expect them to be. You may mail the bill to us. And on the spot, I made a person an address. I said you may send the bill to my grandfather. He pays all our bills. His name is William Sender. He's at 1221 Blue Ferry Lane, Lister, Florida. My granny and I are just passing through. We are on vacation. It was truly, dis it was deeply satisfying to lie to Miss Ivy. However, the certification did not last long because a granny emerged from the back room in addition to being toothless. She looked stunned, as if somebody hit her over the head with something very heavy. I followed granny behind I followed behind granny as she staggered out the door to the parking lot. I said, Granny, Dr. Fox said that you need to recuperate. I am perfectly capable of driving as I demanded on straight as I demonstrated early today. You can recuperate in the back seat, and I will drive. Granny turned to face me and held out her hand. She said, give me the keys, Louisiana. Her voice was strange, muffled, and uncertain, and toothless. She did not sound like herself at all. It was alarming. What could I do? I handed her the keys. We got in the car, and Granny got behind the wheel. We left Dr. Fox's parking lot and went down the road. Granny's face was very white. She was driving slowly, staring at the road in a great, in a grim and determined fashion. I said, where are we going? Do not bother me with small questions, Louisiana. She said in her new disturbing voice, Well, to me, what are we doing? Did not seem like a small question. It seemed like the biggest question of all, but then I remembered that I was angry with Granny. I remembered that I was not speaking to her, and I decided that in addition to not speaking to her, I would never ask Granny a question again. We drove until we got to the motel called the Good Night Sleep Pipe. It was a small motel with a big sign that featured a giant neon candle and neon letters spelling out Good Night Sleep Pipe. There was a painted sign in the window of the motel office that said a good night's sleep is a good thing indeed. There was a Senate there's a sentiment that I agree with, particularly since I had not I had not had a good night's sleep that the previous night. Have been having been woken at three AM and told that the day of reckoning has arrived. 
Are you staying here? I said to Granny, and then I remembered that I was not talking to her, asking her any more questions ever again. Granny turned to me. She said, go inside, use your charm, and, and secure a room for us, Louisiana. I stared at her. Stared, she stared at me. We, we stared death rays at each other. We were engaged in a vicious battle of the wheels. But after a very long time, I looked away. Granny had won. Even without her teeth, she had won. She was still a force to be reckoned with. I got out of the car. I slammed the door as hard as I could. Chapter 8 is pretty long. You know what, guys? I'm sorry. But all the other videos, I promise you, I'll be doing five videos for two chapters every single time for the next five videos. So this is one. So we have five more after this. And I cannot wait for you guys to watch the Christmas special with my five videos with possible two to four chapters in each video. I'm so excited that we've been reading Louisiana's Way Home. And I cannot wait to continue Raimi Nightingale in the next year. I'm so happy, guys. I hope you enjoy your Christmas. And I'll see you all later on today. Goodbye and Happy New Year.